Hi, I'm Zor. Welcome to New Zor Education. Um, I would like to expand um, uh, discussion about real numbers into something which is called approximation, approximation of real numbers. Now, this lecture is part of the course uh, Math for Teens. It's presented on website unizor.com. Now, it also has a Physics for Teens as a continuation course. Now, but today we're talking about math and about real numbers and approximations. Um, I suggest you to watch this lecture from the website. You go to unizor.com and then choose Math for Teens course, uh, Algebra, Real Numbers, and that's where you will find this lecture because there is a link to the video part of this and also there is a textual um, explanation of everything whatever I'm talking about um, maybe with some pictures in some cases um, in any case it's just the dual representation video and textual textual part is basically like a textbook which is completely um, uh, paired with uh, the video presentation plus the website uh, contains the course, which means there is a menu, there is a sequence uh, of uh, chapters or topics, etc. It's a logical sequence. I'm always using something which I have already addressed before into subsequent, in, in the subsequent um, lectures. So it's very important to take it as a course. Uh, also, there are exams for those who would like to challenge themselves. And everything is totally free. There are no advertisement, no strings, financial or any uh, other strings are attached. So just pure knowledge, use it. Now, let's talk about um, the approximation of the real numbers. So, um, real numbers are obviously uh, are quantitative representations of everything, whatever we have right now. We have integer numbers when we are counting one, two, three, etc. Um, we have rational numbers, which is basically like a ratio between two uh, integer numbers. Um, we have irrational numbers like square root of two or pi uh, or something. Now, we would like to do something with these numbers. And it's not always possible in their exact value. For example, what's the distance between the Earth and the Moon. Well, it, it's changing, obviously, so there is no such thing as an exact number. Well, we can say, okay, what's the distance between the closest part of the surface to the closest part of the Moon on certain time? Um, and even that is not really uh, exact. Uh, how many people live on the planet Earth? Well, we don't know. I mean, the approximation is the way to address those numbers which we don't know or even if we do know it's kind of inconvenient to do anything with them in their exact um, value uh, for example we would like to um, for instance evaluate what's the density of the population um, of United States of America well we have to have the whole number of people and divide by the square uh, uh, kilometers or whatever the measurement we, we are using but none of them is exact. So approximation is the way to approach certain problems which we cannot really address with their exact values. But even within the pure mathematics, um, and we would like to do something uh, with uh, certain numbers which, have, um, which do not have a finite uh, representation. For example, pi. Pi is not 3.14. Pi is actually an irrational number with uh, infinite um, uh, number of digits after the decimal point. So we cannot really do anything with exact number pi. Well, obviously we can do some formula where pi is really written as a Greek letter, but that's not the quantitative uh, approach. Quantitatively, we have to really put some kind of a boundaries. We have to approach this not as an exact number but as as I was saying approximation so approximation is a replacement of exact number with approximate number well approximation actually has two sides first if we do know exact number how to approximate it and there are certain rules which we will talk about 
The second part is what if we know approximate number and you would like to do some calculations as if it is uh, exact number. Question is by how much we are mistaken. What kind of an error is introduced if we are using approximation instead of the exact number. So that would be the second part of this lecture. Okay, so the first part is what if we know exact number, how to approximate it. Okay. Now, we approximate pi with 3.14, right? In reality, it's infinite number of digits. We approximate number of population uh, po population is approximately 7 uh, billion people on Earth. This is approximation and this is approximation. None of these are exact. Now, what's the difference? I mean, how can we define what exactly the rules of approximation? Well, in this particular case, we know that approximation has the precision of one hundredths, right? In this case, precision is seven billion. Billion is uh, nine zero. So the precision is So if we are talking about an integer number of billions, it means its approximation is with this particular precision. If you would like to uh, make it uh, slightly more precise, for instance, 7.5 billion, then the precision of this would be 1, 0 less. So this is 9, 0, this is 8, 0. It's up to 100 million, basically, because what is 7.5 uh, uh, billion? It's 7.500 and 500. So that's what it is, right? Or more? No, one, one more. One more triple, right? Thousands, millions. So it's 500 million, right? So this is basically the precision of this number. This is precision of this number. So every approximate number has certain precision up to which it defines or represents actually the exact number. Okay, so the first rule of approximation is first choose precision we have chosen this one, this one, or this one for whatever purpose we have, for whatever need we would like actually to use this uh, approximation. And after we have chosen the precision, we choose the base values our um, number which we would like to represent approximately should actually take, right? So it can be zero. Now, let's say precision is delta. It can be delta, it can be two delta, it can be three delta, it can be any n delta. Because, for instance, uh, we are talking about 7 billion, but it can be 6 billion or 7 billion or 2 billion. If we are talking about billions, it means we have to count in billions. In this case, billions is delta. If we are talking about pi 0 0.01, 100, that means in this particular case, the value which we approximate with a precision 0 0.01, 100, what kind of values can be? 0, 100, 200, 300, 500. Well, actually, minus delta as well, and minus 2 delta as well, and minus 3 delta as well. So negative numbers are also on the same uh, set of base numbers. So we have a precision, and we have a set of base numbers as the beginning of our approximation process. Fine. So in this particular case, our approximate numbers, our base is 0, billion, 2 billion, 3 billion, minus billion, minus two billion, minus three billion. Okay, these are the base numbers, the values of which can represent the exact number. Okay, now, we do have an exact number, for example, we do have, we do have an exact number, and we would like to represent it, approximate it, using this precision. Well, let's do it on a line. Okay, this is zero, this is delta, 
this is 2 delta, this is 3 delta, this is minus delta, minus 2 delta. So, if we have a number, it falls on the real line somewhere. For instance, here. So, which number should represent which approximate number? In this case, it's 2 delta or 3 delta. Or in this case, it's 7 billion or 8 billion or 6 billion. Which number should represent the exact number if we know the exact number? So, the answer is obvious. The one which is closest. That's the most reasonable solution, right? So, first, we, def we define the um, base numbers using the precision and all the multiples of this uh, precision. And second, we choose closest base number to exact number which we basically have. So we are talking about from exact number to approximate number. Now, sometimes we don't have exact number, but we have more precise, uh, I would say, uh, approximate number. For instance, we do know that there is actually 7.547, etc. We have some numbers, not exact numbers, but, you know, plus or minus 100, let's say. Well, we can still approximate it by cutting whatever number of digits to the one which, which we would like actually to have. If it's something like this, whatever, we cut it to a closest. Closest is 8 to this, right? So we always uh, go from exact number or relatively precise or almost exact number to the approximation precision which we actually would like to use. Now, same thing with here. Uh, it's actually 3.1415 blah blah blah, don't remember. Well, if we have chosen precision 0 0.01, 100, it means that this number is between 3.14 and 3.15. Right? This number falls somewhere between. And it's closer to this one because it's 1. So the approximation is this. If we would like to approximate, let's say, with two, two uh, 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 thousands, let's say, one, one thousandths, we have to really cut only three and decide is it closer to 3.141 or 3.142. And actually, it seems to be closer to 142. So that would be approximation to a uh, one hundredth precision base. Base would be, uh, uh, base numbers should be separated by one thousandths. All right, so. Great. I mean, it looks very rational, very logical. We choose precision. We choose this uh, integers, uh, multiples of this precision as a base number, and choose the base number which is closest. Very easy, very ra r r logical. Well, there is one little detail. What if it falls in the middle? It happens right in the middle. For example, uh, let's say our exact number is uh, 3.575 and I would like to uh, approximate it to 0 0.01. So, it's between 3.57 and 3.58 and right in the middle, right? So, which one should I choose? Well, there is no kind of logical solution in this particular case. We just have to say, okay, do it this way. And that's the rule. That's it. So, the rule which is most likely uh, used in cases, in most frequently, I should say, used for approximation in this case, when exact value uh, is right in the middle between two base values is go to the value which has a, a, a larger absolute value, away from zero. It's either this way on the positive or this way on the negative. So, for instance, if okay, let's say delta is 0 0.001, okay, and our number 
of x is equal minus 5.757314. I would like to approximate it with a precision of 1,000. Well, 1,000 is this, right? So it's between minus 5.758 x uh, minus five seven five seven. It's negative. That's why this one is to the left and this one is to the right. Zero is somewhere there, right? So in this case, um, in this case, there is no problem to approximate because it's definitely closer to seven. Five seven, you see this is three, so it's closer to this one. But if it's not three, if it's five, it goes right in the middle between these two. And in this case, as I was saying before, you go to the one with absolute value greater, so which is this one, further from zero, to the left or to the right. And obviously, if after five you have some other numbers like 1, 3, 7, etc. It will be even closer to the 5. So everything which starts with 5 in the next digit after our cut off. So our precision is 1000, so the cut off is after the, third, um, after the third digit, after the decimal point. So if it's 5 or, four or, or more, then you go to upper to the uh, uh, greater absolute value. If it's 4 or anything, 4 and anything after that, as long as it's less than 5, uh, you go to the smaller one. So that's the rule. Now, uh, unfortunately, this is not the only, like, all-encompassing rule. In certain cases, people are using other rules. For example, um, if... Uh, I, I remember one particular rule. If these are um, two numbers, now if this is, uh, for instance, uh, odd number of deltas, and this is even number of deltas, go to even, but if it's something between uh, odd and even, if even is greater, then you go to even number. So this number, which is in the middle, will go to uh, this one, and this one will go to this one this one to the left, this one to the right. It's just one of the rules, and uh, it's rarely used. I mean, uh, my, my personal opinion is always use the rule, go uh, to the greater absolute value, away from zero, as a rule, unless it's specifically um, uh, said that you have to use another rule for approximation, which is a rare condition. So I think you should remember one rule which is go away from zero to the greater absolute value if it falls right in the middle between two uh, integers of delta. If it's like, let's say, three thousands and four thousands, you go to four thousands if it's right in the middle. That's it about how to get from exact number to approximate number. These are the rules. Again, first, choose the precision. The precision in this case is a billion, in this case is one hundredths, uh, in this case it's a uh, uh, hundred million. I mean, whatever the precision is, choose the precision which defines this set of countable, obviously, uh, set of base values. It's zero, precision, double precision, triple precision, etc., to infinity. And then you just think about where exactly your number falls between which two base numbers. So it's always, well, it can be either exactly on the base numbers, which means that's basically the approximation is equal to equal values, but uh, in most cases it's in, be in between, and you choose the one which is closest uh, with this little correction about if it falls in the middle. So that's it. Now let's talk about the reverse. In theory, reverse is more important, because all numbers which we are dealing with, well, except number of people in this room, I am one, I mean, that, that's the exact number. 
but in most cases we are dealing with numbers like we are measuring something, okay? Now, whenever we are measuring, we are using some kind of a ruler or whatever else, and the result is approximation. It's not exact. None of these real-life numbers, except some, you know, integer numbers, um, okay, let's say most of them, most of them are not precise. They are always approximations of some real exact number which we really don't know. So, if the length of this is, let's say, I don't know, uh, 18 centimeters, for, for example, okay? Is it really 18 centimeters? Of course not. First of all, it's different between this point and this point and this point because there is a, some kind of a slope here. So, which, which one is the length? Okay, we can say the maximum length. But even that, this is kind of a soft thing, and whenever it's a soft thing, God only knows where it ends. I mean, it's always approximation. So, how to deal with approximate value, but still have a good feelings about what's the result of calculations on approximate value. And unfortunately, we do not have a good feeling about this. Let me give you an example. For example, we are approximating P to 3.14. Well, there is certain error, obviously. I mean, we know that this is not 3.14. It's 3.14, uh, etc., etc. So, pi is actually between 3.14 and 3.15 closer to 3.14 yes we know that but in many cases we don't even know i mean if it's not like a pi we do know from other sources what exactly okay l let's say this is not a pi let's say this is the length of a uh, certain piece of wood and we have uh, calculated in meters and centimeters because we have a ruler which has meters and centimeters, we don't have anything else. So obviously the result of this is number of meters and centimeters. Let's use centimeters for better centimeters, 314 centimeters. Does it mean that this is exact number? No. But we do know that this real length is between this and this centimeters. Okay, great. Now, let's say we have to have two pieces of wood, one and another. And one of them has this length, and another has approximately, let's say, 6.13 uh, centimeters. What does this mean? Well, it's in between 6.13. This is L1, and this is L2 and 6.14, right? So if we measure this, it means it's somewhere in between these. We measure this, it's between these. Now, we would like to add them together and have a combined length. What can we say? What actually should be one say. Okay. Um, what should we say about this? Well, obviously we can calculate it and uh, well, I meant not six point, just six hundred. So that's just easier. So we add them up. What nine hundred and twenty-nine? And here we have uh, nine hundred and uh, twenty-seven. Now let's talk about precision. Now we know that if this is approximation with a precision delta, it means that this uh, uh, difference between base um, values is exactly delta, right? So we can say that uh, our actual length has a precision of one centimeter here, because the difference between these two base values is one centimeter. So is here. How about here? The difference between this and this is two centimeters. So you see my error 
which was within one centimeter here and one centimeter here, whenever I'm adding together, my real arrow is summing up. So the arrow is increasing. So any calculation you do would increase the arrow. So our exact number, which is a s uh, which is sum of two exact numbers, compared with approximate number, which is sum of two approximate numbers. Now approximation of L1 plus L2 to exact sum of real lengths is worse. Any operation on approximate numbers decreases the quality of approximation. If the quality of this approximation is one centimeter and this as well, the quality of approximation of their sum is two centimeters in this case. Or whatever these, maybe they have definite, different deltas, maybe this is in millimeters and this is in centimeters, but whatever it is, errors are always accumulated. In any operation on approximate number, errors are accumulated. Here is in more mathematical representation. Let's say we have number x and it's approximately a and we have number y which is approximately b. What does this mean? It means that x is between a minus delta x whatever the delta, whatever the precision which we are measuring and a plus delta x and uh, for y we can say exactly the same uh, b plus delta y and let's say I would like to divide x by y now, what is the range of x by y? Well, if I know that x is between this and y is between this, what is the smallest value x by y should have? When x is the smallest and y is the largest, right? And here we will have the biggest x and the smallest y, which is this divided by this. <coughs> and again, if you will have the difference between these, it will be bigger. I mean, if you will compare this minus this, with either delta x or delta y, it would be bigger than both of them. That's basically the point which I would like to convey. Whenever you do some approximations, um, it's the error is growing. And as an example, let me just give you a very simple practical example. Okay. Um, the sea level, sea level in 1880 was zero. That's just, we decided, this is zero. Now, um, by 1994, this level was 160.192 uh, millimeters. So it's... Um, 16 centimeters above. Now, from uh, by 2019, it was 240.775. Well, one would say, okay, the level, the sea level is growing. Fine. By how much? Well, we have measured all the intermediary growth every year here. Okay? 
at certain date probably, I don't know, at certain time, at certain date, at certain place, whatever it is. So they have measures, so we have all the numbers between these. Now, how can we predict what will be in the future? Okay, here is a, an algorithm which is, which sounds really good. Let's take the ratio between uh, one year and the previous year. It will be, if it's growing, it will be one point something, right? Uh, if it goes down, it will be 0 0.9 something. Now, in most cases, it, it's really greater than 1 because there is a growth. So most of these, these will become something like 1.0001, 1 1.003, etc. A little bit fact, a little factor, a little greater than 1, which increases uh, the absolute value. These factors, we are assuming and this is an assumption that there is some something like a objectively exact value of this factor, the factor of growth, the factor of uh, sea level growing every year. It can be less or more than this exact number, but we can actually consider this exact number as the real factor, and starting from this, we can apply it for the subsequent years, so if we will take one of them, which is something like, I don't know, 1.003. If we found that this is exact number based on these actual, which we have received. And then we will apply this factor to all the subsequent years. We will get whatever we will have the sea level in 100 years from now, right? How to find this number? Well, one of the... Um, logical way is, okay, let's just have the average of these. Fine. We take the average, and um, the average was 0 0.16. So, I took these numbers every year. I calculated. So, I have, I have the level, sea level every year. So I divided every year to a previous year, got this number, got all these numbers, and got the average. Well, if I will apply this average to this and uh, do it 100 times, multiply this by this 100 times, I will get some number, right? This is the number which will represent the sea level in 100 years. Sounds logical, right? But let's be a little bit more precise. Now, I've obviously these numbers are different. And I have calculated just the average. Does average really represent the future growth? Well, no, it's an approximation of, uh, uh, of the growth. The real growth will be probably somewhere around this number. But who knows what it is exactly? Maybe it's 1.016 or maybe it's 1.012, and the difference will be relatively, relatively big in 100 years. If I will multiply it by one number, it will be greater than another, and maybe significantly greater. How significantly? Okay. For this purpose, statisticians have something which is called standard deviation. So if you have a certain number of uh, values which are more or less around this one, but they are around and then can be distributed. If this is the average value, all the numbers can be here, very close to this one, or they can be very far away from this, still giving the same number uh, as an average. How can we measure um, uh, the uh, quality of using this as the future calculations, based for the future calculations? Well, if it's a very large extent of spreading of numbers around the average, the validity of this will be less, right? If they are very close to, the, uh, to, to, to this average, if all of these numbers are very close to this one, then the precision of our evaluation is better. So, how can we measure it? Well, the standard deviation actually is um, uh, average of, of squares of deviations. Uh, so, if you have xi, as this particular number, mu means uh, average, they take this square, 
they have sum from i x equal to 1 to n, n is number of occurrences, right? Now, you divide it by n, that's average square deviation, and then have a square root of it. That's the standard deviation. Now, why square? Because this would give you a positive uh, number, no matter whether it's uh, deviation to the left or to the right from the, from the, uh, from the average. Okay, fine. So this basically qualifies our um, values, these values, as being close or far from the average, from this number. Mm. Okay, so let's take the standard deviation in this particular case. And standard deviation, so mu I have 0 0.016, and sigma, which is a standard deviation, is equal to 0 0.012. Well, if, if this is a standard deviation, well, you can say it's average deviation, average square deviation, something like this. So if this is a standard deviation, um, it kind of qualifies um, how valid to use this particular number for future calculations. The greater this thing is, the less precise this number is as an approximation of the real factor of growth. And, and right now we are assuming that the factor of growth is actually constant throughout the 100 years, which is wrong as well. But anyway, that's an assumption. Now, the, in reality, uh, the real value uh, of uh, this factor, if this is uh, average and this is a standard deviation, it's, it's a range. Now, I can definitely tell you that uh, the real value should be between something like mu minus 3 sigma and mu plus 3 sigma. That's something which they say the probability like 95 percent, the real value will be in between these. This probability 95 would be 2 sigma, uh, 2 sigma. No, I shouldn't say yeah. x, whatever x is. This is my real factor, mu plus 2 sigma. That's probability 95 percent. Now this uh, bell-shaped curve, this is the frequency, this is mu, and this is the number of points, the area of this is number of points which is closest to the mu. So the wider the boundary we will have, the more real numbers will be inside that particular segment. I mean, we will talk about this in statistics, but I'm just very, very briefly trying to introduce you. Now, what is, like in this particular case, mu minus 2 sigma, 2 sigma is 12, so 2 uh, uh, sigma is 12, so 2 sigma is 24. So uh, mu minus 2 sigma would be even less than 1, which means it will be, re factor will be growing down um, the level, the sea level. So uh, it, it, it's 95% probability. Okay, let's do it even less than that. Let's have even a more narrow uh, mu minus 1 sigma. What's the probability of this? It's something like 68% or whatever, something like this. So let's choose only those numbers, so we basically ignore the numbers which are far away from the average. I'm saying these are some kind of um, uh, uh, ab abnormal um, factors of growth. Normal factors of growth are within these boundaries, hopefully, which means it's between 0 1.004, like 16 minus 12, and the uh, real number is 1.028. So, yes, I can use this and multiply this 100 times by this number, but if I would like to really make some kind of a evaluation how good the number which I have received is, I have to really check the boundaries because I don't know exact number, this is approximation, exact number is somewhere between these, 
with the probability of 68 percent also not a hundred okay let's just do the calculation let's multiply this 100 times by this and see the result and multiply by 100 times this and see the results if results are closer to each other then we don't have to worry about it means our approximation is okay well I did it and results were astonishing <laughs> let's put it this way because multiplying by 100 times really is significant so uh, 240 times 775 times 1.004 to a power of 100 that's multiplying 100 times gives me approximately 359 millimeters so in 100 years if I'm using this factor my C will rise by well it's about one third of a meter approximately it's about like this even less something like this no big deal quite frankly but if I will use my upper boundary 1.028 to a power of 100 I will have 38110 millimeters which is 3.81 meters 3.81 meters that's significant that's um, more than double my height so what 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 is my point my point is that whenever you're dealing with approximate numbers to evaluate something which involves calculations and these are calculations especially calculations which are uh, especially complex calculations and this is multiplying by the same number 100 times that's complex in, in terms of quantity I mean obviously on the calculator it's simple but from the from the position of accumulating error it's significant so error is accumulating that's my point and you see the difference so be very very careful when you are using approximate numbers do some calculations and use the result of these approximate numbers as kind of a evaluation of exact numbers if the same calculations were done with exact numbers big difference maybe big difference and the more complex the calculations are the worse is the quality of your approximation of the result so again calculations of approximate value result in worse quality the more complex calculations are and that's the point which I would like to make today that's it uh, I, would do, I do suggest you to read um, the notes for this lecture they are basically contain the same material as, as, as I'm just talking about there are some numerical examples more precise than whatever I was just talking about here um, and uh, I do suggest you to use unisor.com as an entrance point to the whole course rather than you might find something like on YouTube or somewhere else in the individual lecture like this one for instance just don't forget this is just a part of a course and I do suggest you take the course and there are some other courses like physics for teens for instance on the same website alright thank you very much and good luck